Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my new Marvel Eternals video. Marvel dropped a bunch of new information about the movie, a bunch of new details and previews, so we'll break it down. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs for X-Men and how they're world building in big cosmic ways in the MCU going into Marvel Phase 5. There's even a funny clip from Kit Harington talking about the movie because he did a recent Q&A on Twitter, so I'll include that clip in the video too. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know what you want them to do with Kit Harington's Black Knight character in the next big Avengers 5 movie. So just going down the list, starting with number 5, everybody wondering how they're going to use the Marvel Eternals movie to set up the X-Men characters in Marvel Phase 5. Because it is going to be a while before we see the really big X-Men characters show up. And the way that they do show up will be very different from what we saw during the Fox Marvel X-Men movies. The Eternals characters were created by the Celestials. They're immortal, functionally, so they live forever. Where have they been this whole time? There are a lot of questions that Marvel has to answer in this movie. But in the way that Marvel sort of weaves in characters like a tapestry, connecting everything, the Marvel Eternals will be connected to all the other pre-existing Marvel movies in sort of a retroactive easter egg seeming kind of way. Like it's all been connected this whole time. They've been around this whole time. They've been influencing things this whole time. We just haven't known about it till now. One of the things that connects all this though is the Infinity Stones, which we just got done dealing with during the Infinity Saga. During the Infinity Saga, we learned the origin of the Infinity Stones from the Collector, which is also happening on Nowhere, the head of one of the dead Celestials in present day. Obviously, the Celestials are going to be some of the biggest characters, literally and metaphorically, during the Marvel Eternals movie, just to explain their backstory, and they're also kind of going to be the next big villains of the MCU. The cool thing that they're doing with the Infinity Stones, at least on a story level during Marvel's Eternals movie, is showing you how everything is connected through the Infinity Stones and the Celestials. The bigger cosmic characters like Eternity, the purpose of the universe, you hear Ego the Living Planet talk about being born and not really understanding who he was. Well, we'll learn a little bit more about how he's connected, how Nowhere and the other Celestials that we've seen before are connected to what's happening during the Eternals movie. So number four, quick history lesson, when the universe was born in the Big Bang, essentially the Infinity Stones were the remnants of the previous version of the universe. That's why they're so powerful, they contain the power of an entire universe distilled down into six small stones. So what happens is, is when the new version of the universe, the MCU as we know it, is born, Eternity is also born with it, it creates the Celestials to go out and garden the universe, just experiment, try to create life. When it doesn't work out, clear the weeds and try again. That's how characters like Ego the Living Planet were created, but they don't have a direct link with Eternity. They don't speak to it all the time. That's why Ego the Living Planet says, I didn't really know what I was when I was created. He was just kind of left to his own devices just to experiment and figure things out. So even though they're not meant to be good or evil characters, you do have rogue celestials. That's kind of what Ego was when he tried to turn the entire universe into himself. But what happens millennia ago is that the Celestials come to planet Earth, they see that life has sprouted, and they try to experiment on it, creating the Eternals, granting them cosmic powers, effectively turning them into a bunch of superhumans. As you saw during the Collector's PowerPoint presentation that he gave the Guardians of the Galaxy on the history of the universe, you saw that the Celestials, like this is Esau the Searcher on a different planet, using the Infinity Stones in their task. So the Celestials used Infinity Stone cosmic energy to give the Eternals their powers. That's why some of the powers in these previews look similar to some of the powers of the characters in present day who got their powers from Infinity Stones. Really good example is Richard Madden's Icarus character who can wield cosmic energy. Look at the light bloom on his hand. It looks just like the light bloom on Captain Marvel when she's using her powers. She got her powers from the Space Stone, just another one of the Infinity Stones. Another really good example is Salma Hayek's Ajak character. She's the leader of the Eternals. She has magical powers, kind of like the Ancient One or Doctor Strange. And back in December, Kevin Feige showed off an Eternals trailer at Brazil Comic Con. They haven't released it online, but during that footage, she was wielding magical glyphs that looked just like Doctor Strange magical glyphs when he was fighting Thanos. Costume designs also seem very similar to the modern Avengers MCU characters' costume designs. Those are all things that Marvel is doing to show you how influential the Eternals characters have been to everything that's happened in human history, yet somehow we haven't seen them till now. So obviously that's a big part of the story too. Where have they been this whole time? Why did they participate in the big battle during Avengers Endgame? And what's going on with Kit Harington's Black Knight character that Kevin Feige has said is so big that he's going to star in one of the next Avengers movies? So in present day, Kit Harrington is playing Dane Whitman. He's not the Black Knight yet. He's just a regular archaeologist that's part of this long lineage of the Black Knight. 
The way they talk about it, he's going to have a Black Knight arc through the course of the film and will slowly become the comic book Black Knight by the end, but he's not going to start out like that. He'll just be a normal archaeologist learning about the tomb, quote unquote, of the space gods, which is actually taken directly from a Jack Kirby Eternals comic book. The Tomb of the Space Gods within Marvel lore is really just a place that the Eternals can go to contact the Celestials, to summon the Celestial Host. That's where you get into the larger machinations in the villains of the film, the real villains, even though technically they're saying that the Deviants are the villains of the Eternals movie. Technically, they're not. Really, it's actually the Celestials. So him learning about the Celestials is sort of this event on the level of the Earth learning that aliens exist, like during the first Avengers movie. So the Eternals don't want him messing with the Celestials or revealing their secrets to the world. You've all seen the set pictures of Gemma Chan's Cersei character with his character. They have a sort of romance during the film. She's the one that actually tries to stop him from revealing everything, but then they wind up falling in love. They had a big romance in the comics, so I'm assuming that they're just going to do a version of their comic book romance. They haven't fully explained how he becomes the Black Knight during the movie, but it probably has something to do with him embracing his family's legacy in the actual Ebony Blade itself. The way they explained his Black Knight armor during the movie is that a lot of it's going to be CG because when they were actually filming it, they didn't have a completed script and they hadn't completely finished building his armor. So they're kind of doing it the Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man armor way, where Robert Downey Jr. rarely walks around in actual physical armor on set. Usually they just do all of his armor in post-production. My assumption is that they're just going to tie the armor to the actual blade. Like he'll hold the blade and activate the armor that way, and it'll look a little bit like when Black Panther activates his nano vibranium armor or Iron Man's nano armor. The blade itself is actually really badass. The ebony blade can teleport, just like Thor uses the Bifrost in Stormbreaker, except he doesn't need to be holding the blade itself to teleport. He's connected to the blade on a magical level, so he can teleport to the blade's location, even if the blade is on the other side of the Earth or if it's on another planet. It's nearly indestructible. It can cut through adamantium and vibranium, and it can deflect magical attacks. This will all be useful stuff for when he's fighting the Eternals characters who have grand cosmic power. They're crazy powerful. Then because he can use it to counter all the Avengers powers, they can have a little bit of fun with that when they get to Avengers 5. Probably the greatest power that the Blade has, though, is that Merlin enchanted it so that any time that the Black Knight is in contact with it, he's virtually immortal. He cannot be killed in battle, which comes in very handy. The way they balance all those powers out, though, is the blade itself is cursed. Like, they talk about the curse of his family. The more he wields the blade in battle, the more people he kills with it, the more it becomes tainted by evil, and the more he succumbs to bloodlust. And eventually he would turn into a monster if he just kept killing people with it. The way that the Eternals movie is setting up Marvel's new X-Men characters or X-Men movies, the mutants, however you want to think about them, is all through the Celestials, their cosmic power, and how they've changed the Earth and the Eternals and humanity. When the Celestials created the Eternals on Earth, they also left trace elements of their DNA, their cosmic power in the soil that slowly tainted the Earth. So eventually it modified human DNA, creating the X gene. The reason why we haven't seen a lot of mutants till present day is just because the X genes have not been activated. That's where you get into the concept of all the cosmic energy that's released through Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet snaps, the Hulk's snap, and then Iron Man's snap. You have three Infinity Gauntlet snaps in a relatively short time span all on planet Earth. The way they talk about it during Avengers Endgame is that just a single Infinity Gauntlet snap releases cosmic energy on a scale never before seen in the universe. Now imagine that happens three times in the span of a couple years. That's more than enough to activate everyone's X genes all over the planet, which is why you're not seeing X-Men pop up till years after Avengers Endgame. The reason why the Celestials are the secret villains of the movie, though, technically secret villains if you want to call them that, is because of the Celestial host. Because they will wipe out humanity if they deem them to be a failure. Press F in the chat for Earth again. And the reason why the Eternals weren't in this big battle during Avengers Endgame is because when this is all happening between the snaps, they still think that they're normal people. Their memories have been altered by one of the other Eternals, Sprite, who has the ability to control people's minds. And just like the cosmic power of the snaps activate a lot of X genes around the planet, those also trigger the Eternal's memory and they start to remember that they are, in fact, immortal and cosmic beings. But hopefully that explains a little bit about what's going on with the Eternals movie. This is that funny clip of Kit Harington talking about it. He's really pumped up about it, but just like the other actors, they don't tell him a whole lot about what's going on, Tom Holland style. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's done. That's filmed. It's just... um. 
Just God knows what. <laughs> what what's wrong with it. I have no idea. I so, don't know what's happening with anything right now. The movie itself has been delayed till February next year just because of the virus. They bumped their Marvel Phase 4 schedule, but we will still get a Marvel Eternals trailer in a couple months. If you have any big questions about what's going on with the movie or the characters, just let me know in the comments below. But everyone, click here for my brand new Marvel Wolverine deleted scene and Easter eggs video, and click here for my brand new Mandalorian Season 2 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.